Um, are there any citizens concerns that are not on the agenda? Yes. I just put the question on curriculum and uh, study halls. Uh, just wondered how uh, students' uh, study hall uh, classes are determined and how that is all uh, laid out for a student that's coming in for the school year on their uh, schedules. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, study halls are, you know, part of the scheduling process. Um, I know Jean's here as far as uh, maybe she could update us a little bit as far as the, uh, the scheduling of the process of study halls. Okay, I just, you know, I had somebody approach me and ask me, yeah. you know, they, their kid got their schedule and they got multiple study halls and I just wanted to kind of get an idea. If somebody has two study halls a day versus one, how that's, how that's determined. Right, it, it's most likely determined, I don't know the specific student you're speaking of, but um, maybe by credits needed, what, depending on what grade they are, how many classes um, and, and credits they might need for that grade. Um, Jean, do you have any other comments about? Yeah, and it's a complicated process. I encourage whoever has a question to just ask me the people over the student schedule and can explain exactly why the pattern is what it is. Yeah, yeah. They, they will be. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Is there any other comments? Um, will there be opportunities to comment on agenda items? Uh, I guess it depends how lengthy it gets and how, <laughs> how what the committee feels like at the moment. Yeah. But it's our intention to do that if it works out okay. Right. Um, there are minutes in our packet of, oh, I forgot to ask if there, anybody else? Okay, hearing none, we're moving on. Um, there are minutes that were provided from just one of these meetings. The other ones we're gonna search out. Did anybody? Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, there's minutes for June 28th that are here. That are draft minutes. Has anyone had a chance to look over them or anything? I did, I read them. Okay, did you see anything that needs to I be? I think I might have seen one thing, but I think it was serious. Nothing bad? Yeah, so I moved and accepted this presentation. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Looks unanimous Aye. to me. Um, revenue report, I do believe here. Did you pass that out or is that? Um, it's part of the packet that we okay. have here. Okay. I passed out. Okay. There's copies of the okay. if they want, but they would prefer okay. that. Right. So that is on Goldenrod, I do believe. Oh, it's right. Okay, I haven't gotten through that enough to see. It's a draft of a revenue report. For yeah, they're all before the golden stuff in the back. That's they were still on aren't working. Oh, I see it. Are they? Okay. I see it, I see it. It's like this. What, what? No. Um, no, it was it's in, in the, the packet. packet. You have to hunt for it. It should have been. It's right before this the gold room stuff. Oh, there's five. Hmm. Is that right? I'll show you the these three. Mm -hmm. No, there's the revenue report right here. Yeah, and not the backup for everything. So there's really not much change since May because on the May report I had noted what the balances were and what we were expecting um, because at that point we had actually already received most of the June revenue. The only thing that's changed since the last month is um, the deficit and the revenue item has changed to the tune of about $150 as we are recording the interest income for the year. So right now we're at a deficit on the revenue side of $161,754 which last month it was 161864 So as we update that interest income, as we go through the reconciliations um, to wrap up the year, that will increase. I expect it to, um, the interest income to end somewhere around 2000 The prior year was 2500 but as our available cash 
we haven't had excessive cash flow, those interest incomes are going to continue to decrease year over year, I expect. Are there any questions? Yes, David. Uh, I'm worried about tuition. Yes. Vermont, where, or why that uh, balance, the, so, so more than 100000 that was not uh, collected, that was budgeted for, but it doesn't so extend into the variance. Because it was collected in FY19. Oh, okay. So even though it's on there as a variance, we collected it in July and it will get accrued back to FY18. Um, I actually just did the entry yesterday for all the FY18 revenues that were received in July so far. So all those have been taken care of already. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Tanya. I said too much paper. Mm -hmm. Save the trees. Or um, the expenditure report is on blue, I do believe. Uh, are you going to do it not stable? Yeah, not stable. Yes. I. That's why I said too much paper. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to okay. Agenda. All right, you're right. The count's payable. That's okay. um, you guys should have the account payable. No, it is. It, um, look through these. If you find any questions, call Tanya. She has all the answers. Right? Uh, yeah, I just just scan this, but recertification membership fee for Andrea Cummings. What? Certification is that? Does anyone know? Brenda would probably be able to answer that better, but if there are certain teacher certifications that we pay for under teachers' contracts. Jamie's Chris. standing up, she's right there. Oh. Chris. I know, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, that's under the special ed. Sorry. Thank you, Chris. She is board certified. She is our board certified behavior analyst. She also is our inclusion specialist and she teaches, she's certified to teach um, our CP bar, which is um, restraint training. She's doing yep. restraint training, so she has to keep up her certifications in most areas in order to be able to do that. And it saves us a lot of money to have someone who can do that. Thank you, Chris. Okay, we have warrants that are here, and we will make sure they get circulated so everybody can. You want to do the expenditure? Mm -hmm. I thought we had already done the expenditures. Nope. No, okay, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. So that's blue. I, I know I pulled up the blue by mistake. Mm -hmm. Same thing. If there's any questions, call Tanya because she probably might not have the answers right off the top of her head. So before anyone asks any questions, I just want to go over a couple line items. Um, since this was printed by Brenda, there were some um, budget line items we noticed were Diff like just not put in the right place or whatever. Um, so there were some custodial salaries that we moved to the right line. So there may be a negative, and that was just by nature of the budget was done through an import process. And when the prior superintendent business manager created this year's budget, she used some wrong account numbers. So we found all those and have since changed those. Um, the only couple that are um, going to show negative is going to be, um, and it's actually not on here, the tuition um, choice and charter school. We know that our expenditure is more than what's currently budgeted. So when you see the next expenditure report, the encumbrance will exceed that, but will resolve itself when we revote our budget whenever that happens. Yeah, David. I have a couple of questions. Um, one, the, the total of the general Yeah. It's like $14,067,000. And 
And that would suggest that we found like half a million dollars to cut. So until we revote a budget, you as a school committee voted this budget on March 15th of 2018. And until a different budget is voted and accepted, I have to, as a director of finance, operate off of that voted budget. So any POs that are presented can only be in line with this budget that has been already voted until we vote otherwise. And that is upon direction and, you know, I reached out to multiple people at the state to make sure that that is what we were supposed to be doing. Mary Jane, Jay Sullivan, and Rob O'Donnell. So do we know where, where we are, $500,000 under Underfunded. The I, see, I saw four lines that jumped out at me: the superintendent salary, the business manager salary. So when you look the at the transportation lines. So when we go to the budget discussion, we can review those items and where that's been updated right now. Because until those are technically re-voted, those budgets are the way that they exist until we actually officially re-vote those line items. We have to operate off of the budget that we had. So the idea is that hopefully in the next month our legislation will be passed and by the September meeting we'll be able to vote to do whatever the school committee chooses, whether they go to the towns or whether we utilize the FY19 deficit funding that's in the legislation to cover our shortfall and at that point we can vote another to accept the budget. It was voted on March 15, 2018. Right, so you guys voted on $14,077,000 and change on March 15th. I don't know what was presented at that meeting because I was not here. Um, I would have to go look at the minutes of that meeting and the documents that were presented to the school committee. Um, my best guess is that it was... But the actual budget itself has not been officially re-voted. That I'm making sure that the departments aren't spending above and beyond what the school committee voted back in March until we vote a new budget. That your management is being done of the funds at this point in time. So my last question, I know in the previous uh, minutes on the first page, there was a, uh, a question of whether you still wanted to see the summarized reports, which on the price of like 18 or 19 right. versus this. And, and the minutes state what I recall, which is we're going to continue to see them. Um, and I believe that you will see that in the September meeting, but because we are working on a new year, those reports all have to be created by Brenda, and it was everything she had to get this particular expenditure report put together, and I know that her and I will be working also um, along with the new treasurer to come up with some better reports for the school committee. Okay, I just don't want that to disappear. Yeah, no, just I think the idea is that this meeting typically there isn't actually any financial information presented other than the accounts payable warrant, so we're just trying to get a little bit ahead of that um, this year. I think we're all trying to use these. Sometimes it's not easy. No, I, I, I just did not. I apologize. Okay. I, I would also urge folks, come in a little closer. Yeah. Sitting way in the back. There's yeah, there's a lot of seats up, seats up front. And, <coughs> and I just want to make a note, too, that there were there are contractual obligations under the contracts for myself and John that 
are in the revised budget that will be voted. So things like superintendent travel and the salaries that you see are going to be over, but that isn't something that I can control because there are contracts in place for that and we have to abide by those. Peggy? I, I'm just not sure what this, the next sheet represents. That's something that you guys as a school committee get every month and that just shows you the chapter 70 funds that were received for the month of June. That's all that is. You guys receive a revenue report from the treasurer every month, you receive that, and you also receive a printout from um, the vendor web that shows you every deposit that came in from the state. And that's something you guys have been getting all year long. This is the first time we've seen this, so thank you. Uh, in this, in this, format. this comes to you from me every month, and I have copies of it in the treasurer's report that have been given to Pam to provide you every month. So if you look back at your packets, you probably have it. You may just not have looked at it before. It's the same every month. It comes out All in the same format possible. from the state. Altogether possible. Yeah. If you need copies from prior months of the year, I have them all in the folder and I'd be happy to make copies for you. Are these a part of the revenue report? Yes. Okay, Tanya, are you all set? Unless anybody has any other questions. Everybody's good? All right. Um, we have, is Emily Beeman mm -hmm. here? Yes, I am. Oh, I didn't see you. Yeah. I can't yeah. see when people are back there Sad hiding. The back. Sorry. Okay. I'm very happy to be home. <laughs> but I did um, make copies for everyone of my um, summary. I wanted to make sure that you all knew that I met my objectives um, for my sabbatical year. Uh, everyone asks me what I did. And I say I did the four C's in DC. So um, I went to Chile to begin with back 4th of July last year. And I visited a number of different schools there. This summarizes everything as far as my original plan. But I did want to sort of just give it to you as a talking point. You're welcome to read through and ask me questions. But I started in Chile. Um, I took a number of online classes because I said one of the things that I really wanted to bring back to Pioneer was the ability to teach online as well as understand what it's like to be an online learner. So um, my Chilean experience was great because I actually did take a foundation for inclusive practice from the Massachusetts Department of Education <laughs> classes while I was there. Um, I took the assessment and online language course, which was actually offered by the uh, National Foreign Language Resource Center, which is located in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> I took uh, teaching languages online through uh, University of Colorado at Boulder and got credits for that course. And then I did an online conference, um, which was a global collaboration day. And that was, I think there were 150 participants and it was done through Zoom, which is an online application that allows you to converse, sometimes see the presenter, sometimes not. Um, but we had presenters from China, India, uh, Hong Kong, all over the world. Uh, very interesting. And obviously, they do this every year. Um, but I never would have found out about it if I hadn't had the time and the resources to actually do things like that. So I left Chile after three months there and went to Colombia where I was a teacher and I have um, this global education guidebook Jennifer Klein who's actually from Denver Colorado but she is now uh, the director of a school in Chia Colombia a small suburb outside of uh, Bogota and she invited me to come and teach for six weeks so I taught second grade, sixth grade, and 11th grade, and had a great opportunity. It's a K through 12 school. Um, really fun to get back with the kindergarten little kids. And actually, I did a project with um, uh, Northfield. So the art teacher and I collaborated, Hillary. And uh, we had all sorts of great talk points, you know, the kids from uh, Colombia spoke English, 
and unfortunately the kids from Northfield also spoke English. <laughs> but at some point we'll have uh, Spanish in the elementary school, I hope. And so after I left Colombia, I went to Catalonia. Um, and obviously it's not a country, but it's a part of Spain that has a lot of uh, issues right now and crises going on. Um, it was a very interesting time for me to be there. I did a work away, which is an online program, and I lived with a family, and I taught them English, and they taught me Catalan, and all I really know how to say is si us plau, which is please. <laughs> I said that a lot. <laughs> Very polite. It kept me very polite, and it also kept me back in that humble service of being a learner. So I got to feel what it's like to be in places where I didn't understand anything. And so here's my Spanish one kids coming at me, right? And I'm speaking Spanish to them full time from the first day of school. Yeah, it'll be interesting. But at least I know what it feels like. And I haven't had that experience in a long time. Um, and so I actually also walked the Camino. I don't know if you're familiar with the Camino in Spain. It's um, a pilgrimage that people take, uh, and it was a side, but it was a two-week two trek. Weeks walking. Yeah, two weeks walking. Wow! From where to where? So I started in Ribadeo, which is in the northern part of Galicia, and I walked all the way down to Santiago de Compostela, got my certificate, and then I continued on to Finisterra, which is the end of the earth. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Beautiful. I have beautiful pictures if anybody wants to see them. Um, and then, fortunately enough, I got a job when I returned home um, escorting middle school students to Costa Rica. So I went with Putney Student Travel. I left with 15 kids from JFK, and then I ran into Mary Lydon in oh Miami. My <laughs> And she told me she was going to go and take a Spanish course for a week. And I said, well, how cool is that? So Mary and Michelle and I had this conversation, and my Nicaraguan school was canceled. So I went and studied Spanish with two of my former collegiates from here. Awesome opportunity. Um, and then I went on to Washington, D.C. So my last trek was at this World Affairs Council, and I have so many materials that I brought back to share with social studies teachers, history teachers, English teachers. Um, I had a visitor from the Pulitzer come in. Um, we just had a fabulous week. And I just finished that DC trip. And I'm taking that for three credits with Marymount. So I'll be continuing with that. Probably, I, I'll probably do the whole series and finish that next June because I think it's so vital that our kids are learning how to be global learners and yeah. understand affairs. How was your online learning experience? It's um, very different depending on who delivers. Uh, so I did, I took a performance assessment in the virtual classroom class because I was disappointed with one of my grades. <laughs> It's funny how that happens, right? And so I learned how to be a better assessor online. Uh, and I do think that a lot of people just think, oh, I can teach, so I can teach online. It's not the case. If you don't have the training, I think a lot of um, the online deliveries are not as good as they could be. So um, I probably had five different learning management systems that I experienced, and so I learned a lot about you know, what works and what doesn't work, at least for me. And then we had a lot of collaborative experiences, so I would talk to other teachers about what worked and didn't work for them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes? I would just like to say, I think it's awesome that you did this and that you are going to enrich the students' lives here. Yeah. In so many ways. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited, so. Yeah. And I can tell that. The, kid, the kids will be able to, too. So yes. that's, that's yes. the fun part. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Michelle, are you here to speak to the, about the Heart Committee tonight? Yeah, I don't have very much. Um, the last time we met uh, was just a couple of weeks ago. And um, we had a conference call with Steve Hemmen and uh, Mark Abrams, Abramson. Um, they are, we talked about the district agreement. We gave um, them our 
uh, input into what we think needs to be changed. Since the article in the newspaper, I've been getting emails, mm -hmm. mostly from people in my town. And so what I've been telling uh, the select board and family members who are emailing me is to write everything down because there will be uh, time for community input. Um, there's going to be um, several meetings within the community um, on the district agreement and you know all the data and everything. We really want to keep this very open to the community um, as we go forward, look analyzing the data. Um, then our next meeting is September, Bob, third. 11th. Oh. I forgot. The third. Mark has it. He's coming. Oh, Cheryl. 19. 19. Is our. Um, yes. And by then, we should have a lot more data. And I think after that meeting, there, we're really going to be moving uh, right along um, and sharing everything with you. Okay. Yes. I actually met with Mark Abrams for about a half an hour today after my DESE training that I went to this morning. Um, and just to update you where they are on the financial piece of things, um, they have, in coordination with myself, providing the budget where we're at right now, um, started to prepare a baseline budget for us, looking at what the next five years looks like for us and where that variance is going to be so they can start discussing, okay, this is the variance we need to make up what are the strategies we're going to propose to make that happen and um, make the district sustainable so i will be working with him you know over the next couple of weeks but he does have that he's coming here september 13th to meet with the school committee um, at our next school committee meeting and he's hoping that this baseline projection will be done so that they can present that um, yeah, but they have so. had a lot of contact with myself as well as the heart committee um, working on the contract that they're fulfilling for us. Yeah, he did say that he'd be coming to the school committee. And um, he mostly um, is in contact with Sue McRae, who we know has been out of the country. So um, we decided that, you know, we, w we weren't going to have our meetings every other week until we collect more data because we had nothing to um, discuss. And it was nice to see our new superintendent join our meeting. We welcomed him. And anyone else in the community, we did have community members uh, show up at our meetings. We are going to, in the fall, um, go back to Bernardston. We've been meeting in Northfield. Um, and we decided um, to go back and have a couple of meetings in Bernardston so people from Leiden and Bernardston um, can attend those meetings. So otherwise, I don't Great. really have any Thanks updates. So That's good for the update. Yep. Thanks. Um, principal report, I see one. And Jean, do you have anything you can Yep, just a couple share? things to okay. quickly share. So I hope you all have been enjoying your summers. Um, we've been hard at work at the school trying to prepare for the fall. We've completed the master schedule and we're able to, with that master schedule, meet 95% of the course requests that our students had made. So that was great. Um, and we've been, we sent out the student schedules this past week, which is about a month earlier than they've ever been sent out before. Um, in, and uh, we've been really working hard to resolve any issues or you get students into the courses that other courses or meet their demand meet their um, requirements so that every student can come in the first day and really have a schedule that's working for them rather than taking that first week to sort of move things around and go in and out of classes so we're really trying to get ahead of it to uh, maximize that learning over the course of the school year um, we're also excited about expanding our middle school model of co-teaching Last year, we piloted co-teaching between special education and regular education teachers in some classes. And this year, we're expanding that model to include co-teaching by regular education teachers, teaching with other regular education teachers. And this is allowing for um, really thoughtful and collaborative curriculum development in the middle school. And it's also allowing us, with the, with the new model, to start to offer, during the school day, 
uh, intervention and support blocks. So that instead of kids needing to come for after, for after school for help, they'll be able to receive small group instruction and assistance during the school day. And that can be used both for kids who need remediation and for kids who need a little acceleration. Um, so that's all coming together. And our middle school team just met yesterday and sort of finalized our plan for the year. So that's really exciting. Um, we're beginning to look at our MCAS and AP and other year-end data to inform our plans to support and improve student learning in the next school year. Um, sadly, there's a couple of resignations, which if you don't already know, um, will be on the report later. But I wanted to acknowledge the fine work that these two people have done in their short time at Pioneer. Um, our high school guidance counselor, Kelly Griffith, who had been commuting for over an hour to get here to Pioneer um, and has young children, took a job much closer to her home. Um, she was very sad to leave, but I did want to acknowledge the great work she'd done over the course of this year. She really pushed forward our college and career readiness curriculum, did a lot of work with students, especially our seniors, to make sure that um, every student graduated with uh, ad enrollment at a college, enlistment in the military, or a job to go to the next day. Um, and all but one of our seniors met that goal for her. So she really had a tremendous impact on preparing our students for what's next and getting them hooked up so that they have a positive next step to take after graduation. And Jennifer Albert Perry, my assistant principal, has also taken another job. She's moving to a district administration position out on the Cape. And she also had a tremendous impact on our students and our programs over her time here. Um, her specialty and what I delegated to her uh, most frequently was the development of a lot of social emotional learning initiatives that we, we needed to bring to Pioneer. Because as everybody, all you've heard from all the principals that our, our students are coming with more and more that they need to cope with in order to be effective learners. And we really need to provide better support as not only Pioneer, but as an entire district. And she was really instrumental in driving forward some of the new initiatives um, that we had been put in place over the past couple of years. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to acknowledge my entire staff. Um, with the new budget, you know, budget restrictions and again, reduced staffing, I really want to acknowledge that everybody in the school has really stepped up and taken what they need to take to make sure that our programming, the rich and diverse offerings that we have for students, the beautiful and clean building, the, the um, very efficient front office that we have to meet students and, and families' needs um, are all still functioning um, well. And everybody in the building has taken on more and have done it willingly and have not complained. So I really want to acknowledge that great work by my staff. Thank you. And you're all ready for the kids. Yes, almost. 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 <laughs> A few things. Great, thanks. Um, I know Chris is back there hiding somewhere. Whoops, don't lose your shoe. Yeah. Excuse me, Jean. Yeah. So are you going to be looking to replace any of these people? Yes, we, um, we've been interviewing for the guidance counselor. Um, so we expect to have that search wrapped up next week. And um, I'm in discussion with the superintendent about how best to approach uh, the, um, the, yeah, the uh, school administration structure for next year. Oh, thank you. Okay. I, I really don't have a lot to say. Good, I like it. Yes, you like that. Um, we did have all our summer programs and um, kids were engaged and um, uh, at Bernardston, uh, we had a few, and mainly in Northfield at the summer camp program. And um, so that's over with now, and now we're just getting ready for the new year coming. And um, it's going well, and uh, we should be all set in terms Great. of staff and everything else. So. Great. Thanks. Kay. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, and I don't see Gina here, so we don't have an athletic director report. Um, old business, is there anything? I don't see anything on the agenda. So moving on to new business. Um, John has things he can talk to us about, I do believe. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, present uh, to the school committee my superintendent entry plan. Um, I gave everybody a copy. I've been working on that. And the purpose of the entry plan is to provide a structure to support and set activities that will guide my transition into the role of superintendent of the Pioneer Valley Regional School District. Um, within this plan, uh, you know, I've set five goals um, and I've outlined uh, the entry plan process and the timeline um, for meeting those goals. Um, 
it's you know it's quite lengthy and detailed to really go over the uh, entire copy now but feel free to look at it it's a draft it, you know any I'm open to any suggestions or uh, changes and if anybody from you know, the public would like a copy they can email myself or Pam and we can certainly get that to you John this looks like a lot of work thank you for doing oh, this you're welcome you're welcome I think we can all go home and digest it and yeah. <laughs> if we have questions we know who to call yeah we know where to find them Exten yeah. extension number three um, yeah, and then there's also uh, Jim McNamara had reached out uh, to Gene and myself. Um, he's from the class of 1983, and he had inquired um, about honoring Dwayne Nelson, who had passed away, and he, he would like to plant a red oak tree anywhere in sight of the cross-country uh, path. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up to the school committee, which would... You want to do that at uh, the budget, I mean, the well, building and ground subcommittee? We can move the building and ground subcommittee to right now because okay, these two things are right here. So would, be great. would you like to so, move something? Yes. Um, in regards to the tree as a gift, um, the red oak, to be planted anywhere within view of the track. Um, the building and grounds committee has visited the information and we recommend to the full committee that we um, accept that gift. Okay, so, so a that's a motion? Yes. Is there second. a second? Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of that donation? Okay, that looks unanimous. Uh, the, the next item is uh, the disposal of equipment request by Gene Bacon. Um, there was one an oven that caught fire and was sprayed with chemicals, which we'd like to scrap, and a refrigerator from Foods Classroom that has been acting up, which has already been replaced, and looking to scrap that as well. Move that those items are, be declared surplus to our needs. Second. All right. Discussion? All those in. Yeah, Jane. So these are going to definitely be going to scrap. <coughs> I know in the past, I mean, it sounds like they're non-functioning and not appropriate. Yet. Right, they're non-functioning. Um, so will somebody be contacted to come and get them, or? I guess that's up to G. Yeah, the custodial staff will take care of okay. them appropriately. Because there is someone who advertises in the paper wanting those things for parts. If they give us money, that would be great. No, I don't think you will. <laughs> Okay, there's a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor? Okay, another unanimous vote. Do you have anything else, John? Uh, no. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. That's exactly. Okay. All right. Would you like to speak on that? I would like to invite Scott Adams to the table. Um, the school committee should all have a copy of his resume in front of them. Um, Pam was supposed to get that to all of you. We posted the treasurer's position on school spring. I say we as in Pam and Gail. Um, in Gail's absence, I was able to. I don't to think you have it because I have it oh. right here. <laughs> um, while she passes that out. Um, so I was able to go on school spring and retrieve all the resumes for the applicants that were submitted for the treasurer's position so that we didn't have to delay the hiring of this position until Gail returned. Um, and John and I both review the resumes for the candidates that were, um, I actually don't need that, um, the candidates that had applied and we picked two candidates to interview this past week. I had done preliminary phone interviews with both of them and asked them to come in to meet with John and I. And we chose Scott as our best candidate. He is a retired CFO from the public sector, uh, but he has most recently worked with a um, center actually for disabled children. So it's a school, but not in the sense of a town public school. 
um, and we feel he has a lot to bring to the table, um, not only as a treasurer, but as far as just our finance structure and looking to put some policies and procedures in place. I think he's going to be a huge asset for us uh, moving forward with our goals that we all have. So I would ask that the school committee take a look at his resume, um, ask him any questions that they would like to, um, and then make a motion to accept him as our new treasurer. Questions? This looks really good. Why do you want to work for us? <laughs> well, I've been retired for about a year. Uh -oh. uh, and you like still alive? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, that's why I'm here. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I really enjoy accounting. And so this, this provides me with the opportunity to work one day a week part-time uh, so, so I'd be semi-retired, if you will. Uh, also, also uh, which wasn't mentioned, is, is that uh, in my earlier years, when, when my kids were in school, I served for five years on the school board, so I know what, what commitment uh, all of you school board members are putting forth on a, on a monthly basis. We vote now. <laughs> <laughs> is there... I will just say I do have a contract upstairs for him that I can bring down to sign. <laughs> I just forgot it, um, and it is within the budgeted amount. Um, Stacy Musso has been filling in intermittently, and um, that contract is in compliance with the budgeted amount for treasurers for the year, just so you guys can vote on that. Is there any other questions? Peggy, you're a financial person. Do you have any questions? I think we're, we're lucky to find Scott. So oh, it's it's yes. a, kind of difficult right. to find someone. We need away. to have yeah. a motion. Who would like to make, 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 to make? Part time pressure. And a second? One day a week. Second. Okay. All those in favor? That looks like you're, you're, you're on board. Thank, thank, you thank you very you. much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. I'll give you a call. I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank well, you. Thanks a lot. Scott, nice Thanks. To have yep. you. Thank you. Scott. Thank you again. Yeah. Things are definitely looking up. Uh -huh. um, so we need to um, vote on budget transfers within the currently voted budget. Tanya, can you move us through that? Yes. So um, John obviously has been super busy um, as. Jean mentioned we have some staffing changes and some resignations that have come in. Um, we're also working on trying to hire a tech director, which we desperately need. Um, and we also lost our tech integration specialist. And after, and John can speak more to this, but I'm just speaking on his behalf. Um, he has spoke to, you know, been in meetings with Jean and other school staff. And upon recommendation of the superintendent, um, these are the budget transfers that I will present to you. We are at, yep, that's part of the stuff I presented to you. It's just an Excel spreadsheet with four lines on it. There are extra at the end of the table if you can't, it's probably in with, it's in with the stuff that I gave you. I think it's that last one. It's in this packet that you received from me, mm -hmm. Jeannie. Thank you. <laughs> so the first transfer that I am um, presenting to the school committee is that we move $50,000 from the assistant principal salary, which is currently at a little over $80,000, to a new account for Dina's student salary. Um, the second transfer is going to be moving 12,000 from the assistant principal salary line to a new account for head teacher salary. Um, I'll let John speak more to both of those positions as he has been in discussions with Jean as far as that administrative change that we spoke about. Um, the next two are transferring $20,000 from the curriculum coordinator to the tech coordinator salary. Um, so John can speak more to this too, but essentially what we have in the budget for the tech coordinator salary and the integration specialist are not anywhere near what um, competitive with those positions in our area. So in order to hire the candidates that are best suited for these positions, 
um, we need to move these funds to the tech coordinator salary and the shared teacher salary, which is where that tech integration specialist is paid out of right now. Um, I believe Mary Lydon is the one who was our tech integration specialist. Um, so those are the four transfers I propose. I would direct any questions pertaining to the logistics of those to superintendent schedule. Questions? Mm -hmm. Sure. Make a motion. Go for it. So we accept all these transfers um, as stated. And a second. Did we approve them. Is that that we approve yes. them? Yes. Was that a second, G? Sure. Okay. All those in favor? No, there needs to be some discussion. Yeah. 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 Please. Yeah. We did the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. no, we have a motion. Well, now we're going to have a discussion. Oh, a motion, a second. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. I, I mean, there's a serious underlying policy change here. We, this committee's talked about dean of students, dean of students for a couple of years. Now it's back without any policy. We're, we're spending these, is, is it implied here that there is no assistant principal? Are we trading titles? What, what are we doing about the functionality? This is, this is, like, yeah, we're, this is insane. We're, we're, we're not filling the uh, vice principal position and bringing back the dean of students position and then in discussion um, about bringing back four head teachers that could work on the curriculum in the seventh through twelfth grade and Elizabeth is, would be working on the curriculum in the elementary schools. I understood John and um, our high school principal to say there was going to be a presentation on what the structure was going to look like, and I would like to hear that before the school committee votes on any line item changes. How can you vote on the changes and then hear the reason? Right. We need the reasons first. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we feel, you know, I feel that the um, dean of students position. Uh, really did a lot of what the vice principal um, position is doing and, and did. Um, you know, discipline was one area. Uh, MCAS uh, coordination uh, was another. Um, they you know, also that position was doing 504s. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of what the vice principal position, you know, was doing um, can be done by the dean of students. I also feel that you know, in looking at the head head teachers. Um, and we can go back to their, you know, I've been looking at their past job description and we can certainly tweak that and work with the union to make sure that, you know, is all, all in, in check. Um, we would work on curriculum and there's various aspects that they could also do to support the current administration here. Yes. I might add um, that um, Kathy Hawkins Harrison, who is going to be the doing of student students has done all of these things in the past for us. So she has a vast amount of experience um, in giving us all of those things um, and doing the best for our students that she used to do too. Um, Jean, do you have anything that you can address? Um, I can certainly share my thoughts if you'd like me to. I would love to have you, yes. Um, When I, I did a little research on schools of similar size in our area, looking at the administration structure of Mohawk and um, the Turner's Falls two schools. When I was hired, um, granted there were more students, but sort of the job and complexity of uh, running a building with this grade span um, and the complexity of problems that we face, in, particularly right now. When I was hired, there were four administrators in the building. Um, under budget constraints that first year um, and the superintendent asked me and I had counsel with other administrators who were leaving at that time they felt that the building could run with three co competent administrators so I agreed and I said okay fine we'll go with three competent administrators last year under budget constraints we were asked to reduce again um, we went down to two administrators it was extremely difficult to run the building with two licensed certified you know, assistant principal, principal level administrators. That's why I was very careful in putting back in some curriculum coordination to really be able to move the school forward. Um, so I felt very strongly and we, as when we met as an entire administrative team, all the principals and Chris and Gail and myself, um, I even in Ruth's absence, we really talked about that and preserved that and made other changes in our budgets um, 
to enable us to really build the administrative structure here at Pioneer that we need to move the school forward. Um, and I think, and I don't remember if I just mentioned, but um, Mohawk, a school of almost exactly the same size as us, has three full-time administrators. Um, the Turner's Falls schools, which are slightly larger than us by about 50 to 70 kids, they have four full-time administrators. Um, I personally am, you know, I've shared these th things with John, and he has other thoughts and perspectives, and you know, it's his decision ultimately to make, but um, I'm very uncomfortable with this change in the administrative structure to Pioneer, and I think it will set us back um, in terms of where we are and what we'll be able to accomplish moving forward. Thanks. Michelle? So, um, let me understand this. You're proposing not to replace the principal. Assistant. The assistant principal, assistant. The correct. I'm sorry, how do you yeah. mean the principal? I meant the assistant. Have a dean of students and then have other people share more responsibilities like curriculum and all that. Right, in, in four, maybe four head teacher positions. That would be a stipend position. Oh, and I just wanna clarify. That piece I'm comfortable with and we have talked about that. So if we, and I have talked about that with you know, with John and with other people, and I think um, taking, I just set the money aside so that we had enough money. It wasn't necessarily that we were always gonna hire a .5 curriculum person, but we need money set aside to support our teachers or whomever, or shared among teachers, to do serious curriculum work here at Pioneer. So that piece of this proposal, I'm comfortable with. Um, I'm not comfortable with taking away, um, all, you know, and leaving only one um, principal assistant principal level administrator in the building of this size and complexity at this time when we have such great needs. Sharon, I saw your hand up. Um, the other schools that were mentioned that are about the same size that have um, three administrators, um, they're not under the same financial burden that we are right now. And I think to get our feet on the ground um, that this is the best decision we can make right now and still keep our students um, safe. Any other committee responses? Mm -hmm. Deb, I see you sort of. I'm sorry, question? Oh, yes. Um, I may have misinterpreted, but it sounded like someone has been hired to a position that is not yet created or approved. Which is not correct. Jack, can you answer that? Well, it's, a, it's a position that was uh, eliminated and we're bringing, it, bringing the position back and Kathy would be automatically recalled and have that position. Because she was in that role previously? Because she was in that role previously. If I can just clarify, um, administrative contracts don't have the right of recall. Yeah, I'll double check that with our attorney. Okay, John? Um, <clears throat> How much money would this save if we replace the? Uh, if you brought in the dean of students and the four head teachers, I think we were at around twelve thousand dollars savings, eleven to twelve thousand possibly. So Jen Albert Perry, who was the vice principal, was obviously paid for her time on a prorated basis up through tomorrow, which is her last day here at Pioneer Valley, um, which left seventy-one thousand um, dollars between seventy and seventy thousand one thousand dollars for us to. Um, either spend on a vice principal, dean of student, head teachers, whatever the structure was um, recommended by the superintendent. So at the end of the day, we're going to have between nine and ten thousand dollars that we will again at another meeting once these are approved, be able to move to another line item to assist in our budget deficit that we're trying to um, manage right now. And I will make a note just because I've had these conversations with Jonathan also. Um, when this particular individual worked here before, she was being paid about $8,000 more. She has agreed to come back at this 50000 in an effort to really help the Pioneer District um, get back on its feet and rebuild this, you know, structure and reputation that Pioneer used to have. To follow up on what Tanya just said, it sounds like the Dean of Students has been hired before we've approved putting the position back in. And that bothers me that I know that we're in a crunch because school starts in less than a month, but 
it bothers me that a position is being filled before it's been approved. Yes. Well, clearly it hasn't been filled because there's no money to fill it, but I can see why discussions would have happened. Um, I have a copy of the job description for the assistant principal in front of me. Mm -hmm. I'm this stuff out of here. Oh, you're good. <laughs> And it looks like eight of the ten responsibilities listed could be, in my opinion, that you know, <laughs> could be f fulfilled by a dean of students. Um, the first and second, which are to collaborate with the principal to support the development and implementation of curriculum, clearly needs to be you know addressed. And, and it sounds like John has a plan mm -hmm. for that. And the second one, to evaluate professional staff is assigned by the principal. I would assume that would go back to the principal, any that the assistant principal was responsible for mm -hmm. uh, evaluating. So um, I won't read all the rest of them, but. Can I just make a comment too? Um, it is a superintendent's responsibility to hire the administrative positions mm -hmm. and by the current bylaws the school committee has we aren't even actually required to vote this transfer because it falls within the administrative substructure but from a transparency standpoint and looking forward to having an overseer come in from the state i have discussed with john as well as the other financial staff that i would like to vote on all budget transfers so that the school committee is informed of not only where our financials are but also allows you to understand what's going on within the school and any changes that are happening, whether they be good, bad, or indifferent. Um, so I recommended that we put this transfer on here, but because it does fall within that administrative line, it is not something that ha actually has to be approved by the school committee. That's right. Yep. David? Yes. Oh, yeah. In terms of transparency, I think that we're for the school committee to have learned about this prior to this meeting that would have been transparent. That would have been. I think mm -hmm. that I think that anything of, of consequence we we ought to not be making decisions. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't. I, it's not that I wouldn't welcome Kathy back. I think uh, there's. But here we are with a, a faced with a budget transfer that's not required, and f but failing to address the policy issue of are we going to? I mean, we had a policy discussion about are we going to have a full time or a part-time superintendent and we have a full-time or a part-time I guess we broke apart there too but this is even worse than than, than that episode the, the committee should be thinking about the policy involved and not bring it to us as a financial question that that now we learn I can vote no and it can still happen even if even if it fails it's, it's astounding John I mean Jim <laughs> Well, it's like Tanya said, that's the superintendent's role. It's as simple as that. And I had a lot of discussion also. I spoke with Gail myself last week who thought this was a good decision. We had talked about this. Um, I spoke with Kevin Courtney, who's my coach, uh, my super in the Mass um, Association of Superintendents Program, who's a superintendent here for 20 years, who also thought, thought this was a good decision. Um, our numbers are declining. There's been plenty of schools around that have, we have around 325 students that have around that number of students with one principal and no other administration help. Um, so I've done my, you know, my homework and I've talked to a, a you know, a variety of, uh, you know, different people to get their take on it. Um, and uh, I think this is the right move for the district. Gee. I personally support all of this, but I don't like the fact that we're putting in a position that we previously previously had eliminated. And there seems to be one member of the school committee that was aware of all of this happening prior to this meeting. Sharon, yeah, Sharon, you've already said, Kathy Hawkins will do a wonderful job again. So you She's had information. That well, good, at least somebody did. Well, but we all should have had it, oh that this was Listen, a proposal. Let, here we are. Let, let's learn from this and move ahead. Okay. Okay. Can I, as something? chair, was told of this a few days ago. 
So other people knew about I mean, I knew about it. Well, but there was no it communication was to the school committee members. About but we, I heard about it from it was somebody else. It was oh. outside of a school committee meeting. Tonight was the night that people should have heard about it. No, people should hear about policy recommendations two days in advance, minimum. It, 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 it really helps avoid making bad decisions. I don't know that this is a policy change or anything. Not, we have it's not someone. A policy change we to eliminate an assistant principal and add a dean. Lied. We have someone who left, and we're, we're eliminating the position. The position one at a time, please. Replaced. One at a time, please. A position is being replaced by somebody as qualified at a lower salary, and once again, that is a superintendent's responsibility and management to hire administrative staff. Um, Jean and then Kathy. Um, can I just make a, a note to the committee that Mass General Law states that the superintendent's responsibility is to hire building principals and that it is building principals' sole responsibility to hire any staff members solely assigned to that building. So the hiring process for this position, regardless of whether you go with an assistant principal or dean of students or create something else, that hiring authority falls to the building principal. And I'd also just, I, I'm just curious, John, um, was this school, I mean, I know that elementary schools commonly will have 300 students and a, and a um, you know, one principal. Were there any high schools in the, in, that you found that had that many students uh, so with? We can look at Smith Academy in Hatfield. They have one principal. Our numbers are, are dwindling, um, and I don't. Mm -hmm. I guess my question would be, what are the responsibilities that the vice principal does now that the dean of students couldn't do, and with the addition of the head teachers, I really think we have everything covered. The assistant principal typically works from 7 a.m. till about 5 or 6 p.m. along with myself. Um, I don't, you know, if you want to say that that kind of those hours are going to be expected by, you know, I think we're going to, you know, it'll be interesting to see if we expect the same thing from someone who's, um, you know. Well, this position would be full time. Right, but there's a difference between 7.30 to 2.30 and doing whatever it takes and staying as long as you need to get done what needs to be done and having the range of skills that is required to do the things that a principal and assistant principal do. That's a, a particular skill set. And we need two people. If, if you look at the job descriptions, there's a lot of crossover between the dean of students and the vice principal, quite honestly, and even with the head teacher positions in the curriculum. I feel it's a position you know, that, that's needed in the school. There's disciplinary issues in this school. Um, there's kids ripping apart cafeteria tables. Um, things need to be a little bit more structured and under control and to be honest with you I'd like to bring the Dean of Students back and that's part would be part of the job not the entire job but I, I think it's needed so you agree so there's Jim there's Deb and there's and there's Peggy and then there's Ariel <laughs> okay. me first okay yes all right so I think a, a common theme recently is that we want to bring more positive energy to Pioneer. And so, and then, so this is a position that we all agree on, and yet we're arguing because we didn't know about it. Um, that seems petty. I would like to know how do you uh, see a position bringing in more students? one position over another position. I would just like to know what's the data that reflects that? Well, I never said it's gonna bring in more students. I just said we're, our school is losing students that we don't necessarily need a vice principal. We could replace that position with a dean of students. Well, I'm just looking for yeah. the reason behind one versus the other. Well, the reason is we can hire a dean of students um, that we can do, m basically the same responsibilities as the vice principal. We can hire four heads of teachers that is really needed and wanted by the staff, especially in this school, to work on curriculum, um, which they can work with Elizabeth in the elementary school curriculum, tie in elementary school through 12th grade. 
save this district eleven to twelve thousand dollars, and that's the explanation. Okay. And Peggy. Well, I just wanted to follow up to Jean's comment on our current assistant principal working seven a.m. to whenever she was done with her work is not a sustainable model. Right. Clearly, she's now leaving. Um, we can't have unrealistic expectations of a work day for, for someone. So, I mean, that's something we'll have to look at. I, I, once again, this, this infighting here, can, yeah. we, can, we, can we say, okay, let's give this a try and let's move on. I'm really tired of the bickering. And I'd like to add, this is a full-time job. We, you know, we haven't uh, you know, finalized the hours. It's going to be full-time, so it's going to be a job that um, we're going to make work and it's going to be full-time. Just like the vice principal job is going to be full-time. Can I just make a comment on the transfers real quick before you take a, if we don't do the structure of the Dean of Students and head teachers, we will then not have the funds to hire a qualified tech director or a tech integration specialist either because we will then have to hire an assistant principal and a curriculum coordinator, which leaves us starting at square one again for a tech director and a tech integration specialist with school starting in three weeks. Area. Uh, it's not why I came here tonight, but uh, in hearing this, the, it's, I feel it's a good thing. And I'd like to remind people of some things that have happened over the last few years. Uh, you may remember that when it was voted to remove this position, that a great majority of the high school faculty stood in support specifically of Kathy Hawkins Harrison and the reason why they did you talked about positivity and you talked about how it's going to bring in students is because the school had a reputation and specific people were part of that reputation for nurturing children and for running what he needs to take his seat he's over there kind of running people. David, if you're going to um, be away from the table, maybe you can go out into the lobby. Oh, he shouldn't, he sit, shouldn't be he talking to anybody. He should stay at the meeting. Excuse me, sorry. Ariel? Um, that there was a reputation of uh, nurturing and um, watching over and organizing students from the middle school upward with 504s and with MCAS and in the hallways and with the buses and it was, she was the mother of our school. And people out in the community know that. And so whereas this is a general position and there's lots of things to be discussed about it, I think this idea is greatly exciting because it would make people say Pioneer is coming back. Okay. Um. I think John, yeah, I think John is, go for it. Um, I think it's a really great innovative idea. It saves us money, it accomplishes all our tasks that we're trying to accomplish, brings back some positivity. And I find it curious that our previous superintendent did this stuff all the time for three years and nobody ever questioned him once. Right. What yep. you're here, you're here. That's right, yep. Can we move the, can we move the item? Yes. It, the, question, the question has been moved. All those in favor? We have to make a uh, the motions. The motion is on the floor. I did make the second. Second it. I just wait. And then we have discussion. discussion. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Why not? One on position. I am, and I'm in. positive. So this. Position will now be posted. It doesn't have to be. I don't, it doesn't have to be. It's a recall position. Mm -hmm. Administrative. We just, <coughs> just read to us. Administrators can't be recalled. I'll but check. I'll check uh, into that. It's, we don't do the hiring anyway. If for any reason that this needs to go through the hiring process and whatnot and it does not happen, we can always vote to transfer the money back to the assistant principal line or uh, any other administrative line 
in compliance with Mass General Law and hiring policies. But because we don't have another school committee meeting till September 13th and school starts, we just needed to make sure this was available. If we go forward and hire a vice principal instead, once again, we don't have to have the school committee vote to move it back. But we just felt that this was, like I said, once again, transparency. Okay, next item is budget update of estimated deficit for FY19. Tanya? Do you have anything more to talk about that? Um, I didn't touch on anything that changed okay. on the budget sense. So I have, this is by far not anywhere close to being finalized as I'm still working with um, different members at the state to really understand what goes into the governor's budget and how we verify some of the numbers that are on there. You guys do have a copy of the finalized governor's budget in front of you that is a printout from the Mass Department of Revenue that shows the Chapter 70 funds, it shows our school choice receiving, and it also shows our offset for a choice and charter out. Um, I still have some reservations regarding the school choice receiving. Um, as those numbers are done based on an estimate from FY17. And I do know that we had decreased enrollment into FY18, which is what this number is based on. And it's not, we're funded based on our FY18 when we prepare our end of year report. So even though this is based on, you know, the state's calculations, we're sti still being rather conservative um, with discussions I've had with the state as far as what our offset to health insurance is based on that school choice, as well as the transportation piece. Um, we're kind of closing the gap on that transportation revenue a little bit more than I'm feeling more comfortable with, but I still have some work to do because based on the calculations that we got in FY18, um, I'm not finding that it lines up with our FY17 expenditures. So I'm gonna have further discussions with Rob O'Donnell to find out what expenditures we were actually reimbursed on and if there's things that weren't um, eligible and so forth so that I can have a better estimate to bring to the school committee as far as th those two line items and revenue go. But you'll notice that there are three columns in here, the original superintendent's proposed budget with the highlighted $14,077,676. There's then the governor's um, column. You'll note that the only things that are really the governor's are bold and italicized. All the other revenues are our town assessments. Medicaid, which I based on prior year receipts, which was a little over 67,000, and we actually expect to be able to bill more Medicaid this year because of the way that we are paying for our special ed tuition, which is what that Medicaid is based on. Um, and that comes from conversations I've had with Chris McGuire that I will continue. The tuition and fees line has been decreased based on knowing that we're only gonna have nine students from Vernon versus what we had last year. I've also decreased the interest income, as I mentioned before, to $2,000. In FY17, we only had $2,500 in interest income, so the fact that it was budgeted at 7,400 for FY18 and accepted is kind of beyond me, but um, this is in line with what we can actually expect to have for interest income. So based on the governor's budget, our total revenues would be up um, from the 14,077. The next column over is my proposed, which you'll notice has a decrease in transportation that's based on 72% of our actual expenditures from FY18, which is what we get funded in 19. Um, I confirmed that 72% today in a DESE training that I went to so that I knew what I could base our um, reimbursements on, as well as um, you'll notice the charter school reimbursement has increased a little bit. So with that said, if these numbers are solid or even increased, we're looking at being able to vote close to $60,000 in additional revenue from the original superintendent's um, budget based on the governor's final budget. And there's more notes of that in the actual expenditure budget piece. Um, not much has changed since we met last on the expenditure side, but I will touch base on those. Um, I did have a summary sheet and I apologize, I did not print that out, but they all reconciled against <laughs> the last budget. Um, 
as you know, the superintendent and myself were hired. So you'll note that those are highlighted um, and bold as changes from the last time. So those contracts have been finalized and those numbers reflect that in this revised FY19 budget. Um, I did decrease the financial overseer from 55,000 to 50,000 because right now we're not gonna see anyone till at least September. Our legislation has passed one legislative body. It's waiting to pass the other legislative body. So that will continue to decrease on this proposed budget until that person is actually in place on a proration of the 60,000 a year. So right now that's decreased another 5,000. Um, our health and life insurance, the total amount, the 3,237 and change, is a decrease of $48,971 from the last budget. And that is based on the actual bill we received from GIC. So those are realized savings. So that saved us about $50,000. Um, unfortunately, the other piece of that is our tuition charter school sending out has increased by close to $8,000 since the last budget that you saw. And once again, that is based on the new governor's budget that you have in front of you. And that is the finalized budget. Um, and I did put in the um, special reserve contribution. That's a requirement of our legislation. That's 0.025% of our FY18 budget that will be required in FY19 when the legislation passed. So I figured I'd go ahead and throw that in there in anticipation of the legislation being approved. Um, if you go all the way back to um, teacher salaries under Pioneer, um, I just highlighted that and I should have highlighted all the other teacher salary lines. Um, with the influx of teachers leaving and new ones being hired, I'm going to be reaching out to the school principals in the next week or so before school starts and at the next school committee meeting, I expect to have all the teacher salary lines updated with the actual staff that the school year is going to be starting with. Um, just an example, um, we replace a social studies teacher that left at an M15 level and the current person being hired is an M10. That in itself is $11,000 in savings. That's not listed on here, but I will update those when, before we meet again. So we may see some savings in teacher salaries um, when this is presented. Um, and then the only other things that actually changed and it's just the allocation of where they are is under special ed, you'll see the tuition lines um, have been updated in accordance with the information that was originally provided to Ruth with an offset to circuit breaker. So there was like a $20,000 net change there. And once again, that was a case of they presented the actual tuitions that we were going to have to pay for these students based on contracts and they were slashed in the budget that was presented to the school committee. Um, the good news is we are going to have monies from Circuit Breaker to be able to utilize in FY19 because our deficit will be fulfilled um, and it may end up more than the 100000 and I'm working with Jay Sullivan on that right now to get a better understanding of what we'll be able to utilize. Um, the only other item on here that I have increased is the summer services. Um, this was also a line that was presented by Chris McGuire to Ruth and was decreased without her knowledge. Um, the expenditures right now are already at 28000 which is over the budget for salaries. Um, some of that can be consumed by a grant if need be, but the grants are super, super tight. So once that summer service salaries has been finalized, I would recommend that that line be voted to what it was what the actual expenditures are because they were requested based on the prior year summer services and slashed by the prior superintendent without the special ed director's approval. Um, so with that being said, I've presented a couple scenarios for you guys. Um, our current expense deficit with everything that's been changed right now is 333000 If you take the 60000 roughly in revenue that I'm expecting we can increase our revenue budget. It brings us down to 274000 The two scenarios below that are if at the end of all this and discussions with DESE and DOR, I feel comfortable with utilizing the entire governor's budget. The first scenario shows where we would be um, 
if the school choice is put in the budget to the fullest to offset health insurance and then the transportation if I feel that that 580,000 number is going to be what we actually receive from the state based on the reimbursement expenditure that's been approved then <coughs> we would essentially be down to 118,000 that we need to make up with FY19 deficit so these are just some scenarios they're going to fluctuate <coughs> once we finalize or once I you know come to you guys with what I'm comfortable with based on conversations with um, state representatives on where our revenues are going to be for the year. Can I just ask? Sure. So, so are there two scenarios in this? I mean, we have gray. I don't know if it was originally two different colors. Or well, the top one's like a little darker because that's actually where we are right now. That and I, then I, I the bottom okay ones are a little lighter because those are what if scenarios. So the first what if scenario is if the 879,200 that is being given to us under the governor's budget for school choice receiving, excuse me, is what we will receive and what I'm comfortable putting in the revenue budget, then that would change those line items respectively and the same as the transportation piece. If I'm comfortable uh -huh. with okay. what's on the governor's budget for the transportation reimbursement, based on the percentage they've given us and what our expenses were in FY18, then that would be where we are. So this will be updated again before the September meeting, but um, I've done a lot of work with the state trying to understand the Chapter 70 revenues and what we can really depend on in FY19 to get to this point. So there's still more work to be done, and Jonathan and I both will be um, taking a look at it also, and that's part of his entry plan is working with me on working to finalize the FY19 budget once the um, legislation is passed. Thank you. I saw your hand go I, I just have one more mm -hmm. comment, if I may. Um, once we are sure of the state figures and once we feel comfortable with this budget, I would still like to have it out on the table to go back to the towns for the, for the amount of the deficit and not increase the deficit that we already have. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully when we come to the table in September, this will be at a position that it's finalized and I will request the school committee to vote, present how they want to um, accommodate the deficit that's in the budget because it'll essentially be another funding source, whether it comes from the towns or um, from our deficit financing and we'll need that vote and approval before we have a balanced budget again that we can present to DOR. Um, for acceptance and then that will allow the committees to have their tax rate set as well Tanya um, I would hope that we could get those figures early enough so the budget subcommittee could take a look at them before can't, I would just like to have it before the next school committee meeting mm -hmm. um, if you guys want to have a budget subcommittee meeting before then let me know unfortunately right now a lot of the state representatives mm -hmm. are out on vacation and it's right. kind of been trying to play tag with yeah. some of them so I don't have an exact timeline so my goal is by the next school committee meeting I'm but just thinking that the okay. budget subcommittee could very easily put some some roadblocks if we didn't discuss it prior to yeah. so I think if it needs to be want to set something up that would be okay. well, how soon for the next school our meeting is on our meeting is on the 13th um, we can do it the week prior okay I would think that we, that might be good Right. Right. Now I'm having right. a hard no. time necessarily coordinating all the state information, um, and that's why this is kind of scenario based. Um, I did meet with Rob O'Donnell and Jake Sullivan from the state today while I was at the DESI training and had some conversations, and they're going to be trying to get back with me with some answers. Right. Week, so. Well, David is chair of the budget subcommittee, so we can see if he can set a date maybe the week before. Right. John. I'd just like to thank Tanya for all her hard work. I think we've got more meaningful budget information in the last two or three months than we have the last three years combined. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a breath of fresh air. I'm still that learning, um, but that's I good. Definitely, um, and I've, I've got the connection with some of these state representatives from my work with in the municipality side, especially Mark Abrams. I've worked very closely with him, so it certainly makes getting to the bottom of this a little bit easier. Great. I think we all appreciate it. Um, 
memorandum of agreement between the teachers. Ariel, do you have anything to talk about that? All right, please do. Oh, Ariel and Kim. Uh, Kim is coming for the second part. Good. I have two items. Hi, everyone. Hi. I hope you've all been having a nice summer. Yeah. Um, it doesn't change the it doesn't change the calendar. It just gives teachers credit for that day they come in and enables them to leave with the students rather than stay till the end of the day, like on a Friday for PD, the day before the Christmas break. Discussion? <coughs> Ideas? Jeannie. So Ariel, are you asking for a memorandum of, under, of, a, of a, a memorandum of agreement, understanding mm -hmm. that um, from the school committee to vote that we would um, on past practice? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Basically. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it, it did just sort of fall through the cracks. I sh we, well, should, we should have done it in May, and well, it didn't happen. Well, negotiations were. Right. Um, Any other? Abruptly. Yes. <laughs> Halted. Any, two, <laughs> Any other discussion? Has John had a chance to discuss this with building principals? Uh, no, I, I spoke with uh, Ariel. Um, I haven't had a chance. I was away last week, um, but I'm in favor of it. I think it's something we should honor. Okay. Uh, it is part of the contract. It's just that the contract is still being negotiated. Okay. Jean, as the only building principal here, do you? What's your feelings? Um, my feeling is, if it's a day that we don't have to plan for, and it's just for teachers to work in their rooms, I think I'm pretty sure that'll be fine with all my colleagues. Um, the only wrinkle I can see is then the new teachers have to come in the Friday before the teachers who are new to the district. It pushes their first day back. Okay. Which might be problematic. Could, could be problematic. Yeah. yeah. Have the have well, Ariel? I'm trying to think of what it says in the contract, and I can't, I don't, I can't have a photographic memory. Um, are they adding, I'd have to look, are they that new teachers have to come in three days before, is that what you said? The day or before the regular teachers and that's part of the, the con contract language, yeah. is what you're saying. So we, so we do have that as well. And I don't know how many new teachers there are, but something to consider. How we might do that. Maybe a one-time exception could be made. <laughs> Right. Well, and the and the other thing. So, with this this possible accommodation, where if somebody is not here on Monday because they're still coming back from vacation, if they could document that they came in the Thursday before and they were here for that day, and submit that to their building principal, new teachers are going to be setting up and and you know, and, I mean, the truth is is that teachers are putting in usually many hours in getting ready for for school and this was kind of a compromise um, when it was originally put forward there was a benefit to the district that someone told me about today too that I can't remember what it was but it was a compromise um, so so maybe the new teachers also in that they are setting up their room and maybe they did it two days before rather than on that Monday when they're in that time um, and that could be accounted for Sharon Go for it. Everybody's agreeable. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we honor the past practices of giving those four and a half days to the teachers and for, to have them document uh, the makeup times of mm -hmm. that and present to their building principals for approval. Um, I'm looking for a second. I'll second that. Discussion? If not, all those in favor? Looks unanimous. Great, wonderful. I bet Kim has the other piece of the puzzle. No, I'm just here. Okay. We're, we're here. Well, we have number two. Okay. We have number two. She's here for support for number two. Right. Okay. Well, number number six. Yeah. I know. 
Uh, I'm not number sure. Six. Yep, so it's number six on the. Our number six. Yeah, sorry. I, was, it, I meant it was our number two, but it's number six on the agenda. I can't remember <clears throat> that. Huh? I cannot remember what you're speaking about. The lawyer I'll said, you. I'll give you a copy. You have it? Okay. The lawyer said in pertaining to this item? Yes. Okay. Well, hold, okay. hold on one second. Okay. I, I will frame my purpose in presenting it, which may negate what that says, but I don't know. It won't okay. negate it. Well, because my my intention is not for direct action. Okay. Let me read this first, mm -hmm. and then we will stay out of trouble, okay? I agree that the vote of no confidence should not be an agenda item. Oh, okay. Instead, the association should simply rely, relay the fact that a no confidence vote occurred during a public comment. Mm -hmm. However, the association cannot be allowed to elaborate on the reasons for the vote of no confidence as it would constitute a complaint. The chair would then indicate that complaints cannot be heard in open session without following the open meeting process. The chair can state that the committee will determine whether to hold an executive session at the future meeting to discuss such matter. Mm -hmm. There should be no discussion regarding the no confidence vote in open session. So what I was going to say is that a no confidence vote was, was completed and I was gonna put a request to the school committee that there be discussion in an executive session at whenever that is decided to be done a formal request from the association that this be investigated and discussed in executive session. Committee members? Make a motion that that happens. We will second it. Okay, it's been motion and second. Discussion? I'm sure we'll run it by our attorney. And mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and have our attorney follow there. Follow his exactly. recommendation, yeah. All right, all those in favor? Okay. Is that a yes or a no, Deb? Of going to executive session, mm -hmm. yes. Not okay. yet, though. No. Not now, no. no. It's not on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It has and, been. And that's all I wanted, was to put that forward as okay. something that I would like Thank to happen. Great. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Would you give that back? Can I just ask the school committee, too, as you're having Pam prepare the agenda for the next Thursday meeting, mm -hmm. um, to add on there the vote to accept the textbooks that Pioneer well, District because well it was supposed to be on this agenda and i just asking you guys to follow up with that before the next meeting because school will be That's starting not a real school committee meeting no it's, it's not what it we is we were invited to this meeting but no. we have to post that meeting and i think that the school committee could post a separate meeting just for the purpose of that vote so that after. meeting but is at that meeting is okay. what six o'clock yeah what meeting are we talking about? There was a meeting on the 16th with school with Desi and DOR. I sent right. you an email on that. August. Of August. Okay. Well, it originated um, from the boards of selectmen and finance. Well, finance right. committee. Right. It was Jean. Right. It committee. was Jean and Lois that. And we have to post it only because there's probably going to be a quorum, right. but it's right. not really okay. our a school, meeting. Exactly. No. So in that respect yeah, then the school committee would need to have a special meeting to accept those textbooks before Except school starts Jean, can you speak to this yes, real quick yes, so that yeah. um so it should um our ap biology course requires a new textbook and state law is that you have to approve any textbook purchases it was supposed to be on this agenda it didn't get on this agenda so might i recommend that maybe you meet 15 minutes before this meeting just have a very short because I think I mean it's I've talked about it with Sue McRae Pat and I have been in contact I, I don't think it's going to be controversial um, and I think it's the business that can be quickly done and then we can distribute the textbooks to the students at the beginning of the school rather than having to wait until after the September meeting to be able to give the students their textbooks this is the first I've heard about it and I, I am on the curriculum personnel so I yeah. um, I think if we just call our meeting for a quarter of six, whoever can be there, if we, I mean, if everybody's gonna be there for six o'clock anyhow, 
And that was why I was asking what time it was six stated. It was 6 o'clock. Okay. Since you guys are talking about setting meetings, I just wanted to put that You're going to be here to run it? Quarter of 6. Mm -hmm. Thursday night. I know. It's going to be crazy, but I'll do it. Okay. Okay, is that all right with everybody? So we'll just. So that will be posted. What are yeah, we doing? we'll have to. It'll have to be posted well, anyhow. Right. So we can contact Pam and ask her to do that. Yeah, I will do that. Okay. Okay. Um, can I ask that we move the building and grounds subcommittee report up to number seven? Because that's the last. Okay. Item. Okay, Sharon has. Uh, For the MOU that we just talked about, I just want to say that I'm going to have that written in the morning and it will be up with Pam. So uh, you'll need to sign it. Okay. So just put that on your mental right. list. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so there's been a motion. Yes, uh, the building and ground subcommittee met um, today before this committee meeting and uh, we discussed the uh, Ooh, move. Do you need to vote on that? Motion? That's what yeah. she's trying to explain. Oh, no. okay. This is a lead in. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, it's in regards to the superintendent office moving to the guidance conference room. And it, the building and grounds supports that, and we're looking to um, have the full committee um, agree upon that. So I'm looking for a motion. I think that's what, what Ann was talking about. We need to move, vote to move. To move out of order. Out of order. Oh, that's yeah. Not I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you made a motion to move out of order. Somebody okay. seconded it. I did John that seconded earlier, it. Though. I mean, okay. No, but there was no. So all those in favor. Yeah. John seconded it. All those in favor of moving it out of the motion. Okay. With so these are, two, are you don't have to vote on it, right? To, that's what we were just doing. Move out of order. Out of order. Yes. Deb, are you for moving it out I'm of order? I'm fine with moving it. Okay. okay. So, All right. So that's unanimous. Okay. Now, go ahead. You've already said your spiel, but if you so need to do it again. So we're looking for um, a vote from the school committee to accept the move uh, that's recommended by the building and grounds uh, subcommittee to move the superintendent's office down to the guidance conference room area. Is John on a... Why? Why is... Is this being recommended? I think John can probably address that. Yeah. Uh, so first, Ruth's office uh, was on the second floor, and Tanya would like to take that office to be close to the new food director. Um, secondly, I'd like to be more visible, not only in this building, but all, all buildings more accessible to staff. Uh, and I, I think it's a good move. Uh, there's other, comp like Chris McGuire had offered um, to use her room upstairs as a conference room. She's got a large table with, with chairs. Um, so I don't think it would be any kind of inconvenience. Yeah. Secretary will be on the second floor. Mm -hmm. Computers. Right. And essentially okay. the job was split. So we now have two people filling one job. So we were trying to logistically figure out where everybody could go that would make the most sense. Currently I'm in a quasi set up desk in the accounts payable payroll treasurer's office, wow. but I'm yeah. right in the middle of everybody. Um, and with this position and John's, we obviously at some time need confidential phone calls, et cetera, um, that everybody and their brother doesn't need to, you know, kind of be involved in, so to speak. Um, and we also just need quiet workspace. So working in an office of four other people um, for myself, you know, isn't going to necessarily produce the best results. So this was the solution. Which room is the conference room for the guy? That's the third or fourth one down, just before the key. It's right across the hall. So it goes the guidance, the GC, yeah. uh, TV, the and empty room, and then the Kiva. Yeah, mm -hmm. the empty room, that's where we met to discuss. Um, oh, okay, yes, okay. okay. Discuss the, um, yeah. Sickly, yes. yes. Okay. Any more discussion? I'm somebody to make the motion. John? I'd like to make a motion that um, we approve the superintendent's office change down to the guidance conference room next to the Kiva. Okay, is there a second? second. All right, more discussion, Jay? Um, 
the guidance counselors that are currently um, hired, that are currently employed, what is their feeling on this with moving the um, conference room? Right. To that? <laughs> well, um, one of the guidance counselors volunteered because she's going to be um, basically working in the Bright program, which is in 359. So she's moving down to that room anyway. Um, and the other guidance counselor is the guidance counselor that just left. So but we're hiring. But we're, but we're hiring. So there's actually an extra space right now in that, in that, in that guidance conference room. Okay. My, my other concern is if you have, Chris, is your, is Chris still here? No. All right. Her conference room, is it on ground level? It's on the second floor. And my just my concern is that if you have parents who have a disability, right, we have the other conference room here okay. also. We also have the elevator. Yeah, the elevator. And the elevator. Yes, yeah. Get the logistics. Deb, so do the do the guidance counselors have their own separate room? I know there's Janice, the secretary. Yes, and there's two separate rooms within that suite of, so of if, offices. Uh, a guidance counselor is talking to a student. Right, it's confidential. They can close the door. Yeah. Yep. There's actually four rooms in that suite. They've got the secretary's space, uh, two guidance counselor's offices, and then a conference area. Okay. That's good. Okay. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor? Bananas. Uh, the next thing on our agenda is um, to vote to pay Mary Lydon's early retirement incentive. You could read the rest. I'm going to speak to this real quick um, because I was working with Suzanne in our human resources payroll this week regarding this. Um, when this item was voted earlier um, last meeting, the issue that has come to our or my attention and that's why I asked this to be put on the agenda is that in our PBREA contract we are only allowed to pay um, 30000 a year for early retirement incentives and in order to stay in compliance with that we need to pay Mary Leiden out on her regularly scheduled retirement as if she had retired um, had given that 18 month notice. So even though we accepted her early retirement and we're waiving that requirement, we still can't pay those funds until she was originally supposed to. So this is just a re revision of the original vote to be in compliance with our union contract. So what are you saying? We cannot pay her on June 30, as of June 30th, 2018, because we've already expended the 30, th sorry, and I should have made copies of this. This is a schedule of our early retirement incentives. And basically, it's like a first come, first serve. So if three people retire, they get X amount of money, and it's Generally. broken out between, well, it's broken out between two years. So they get half of it right. in one year, half in the next. So it's all a timing. So if only one person retired, they could essentially get the whole amount. Um, but we don't have the funds, nor is it in compliance with union contract. Sorry. Yes. And Mary is aware of this. Yes, she's been in conversation with um, Suzanne in regards to this, but we just needed to um, vote that because essentially she could have retired and gotten zero dollars if all those funds had been consumed from retirees that had placed their notices prior. So, what is the proposal for her retirement benefit of the thirty thousand? So she will get 5000 of that 10000 on June 30th of 2019 and the other 5000 on January 15th of 2020, which is... So she would still be receiving it. She'll yeah. still receive the funds, but she won't be receiving it as of June 30th, 18, and then January of 19, because we've already expended mm -hmm. that 30000 in FY18. From what I understand, Suzanne has been in conversations with her that this is, you know, under the union contract. Right, right. Um, the last vote was just to accept that 18 month waiver of her retirement, mm -hmm. but the financial piece needed to go along with that and wasn't known by myself at the time that that was under our union so contract. Just, pay, wait, just 
approving the um, retirement incentive. We're approving so the entire. Sending of the vote. Is that what I was going to say. I would say that we need to um, make a motion to revise the vote from the prior meeting to include the payment or rescind it one way or the other. The problem is that we don't know who made that motion nor okay, second. Oh, you did. Okay. Right. We don't have the final minute, though, from that meeting. It was June 28th. I think we only have oh, June 26th well, we right special here. meeting. No, this is June 28th. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, I thought we had June 26th. Okay, let's see what the motion is. Do you want me to read it to you? Please. Yeah. I'm motioned by Young, seconded by Capo. The committee unanimously granted Mary Lydon an exemption from the 18 month advance notice of retirement. Okay. That was June 28th. Yep. yep. Okay. So, okay. The problem so you didn't we. vote anything except to allow her to retire. Yeah. Right. Okay. But so. along with that, because the 18 month requirement is so that they can get this incentive. But that incentive is tip right. So if it's waived, that then means that she would have gotten half of the money in 18 and the other half in 19. But under the union contracts, and like I said, this is all from our payroll human resources um, staff, Suzanne, that we have fully expended that and we would be out of compliance with the union contract if we were to pay her that way. So we just okay, need to. Year, half no. It would, it, she would have been paid half in June of 18 and half in January of 19. It's just put, it just put off for a, for a year. Yep. It's just deferring her actual payment of that incentive. She's still going to get it. It's just the timing of it has to be in compliance with the union contract. And it, it's worded that you get half of it the year after on June 30th and half of it January 15th the following year. Same, same thing a year later. Jane has had her hand up. How many other people are retiring I have no idea. Who are the three? So Do you have this, Jane? No, no, it's not on that. No. So the people being paid out in FY19 is Betty Wickham, which is her second payment okay. of two, Mary Wyden, which will be her first of two payments, Carol Sacco, which is her first of two payments, and Thomas Dinity, which is the first of two payments. Those three individuals will then be again paid 5000 in FY20, and there are 15000 remaining in that fund under the, con the union contract to be paid out in 20. So if someone retires in 19, if more than one person, then that remaining 15,000 would be split amongst those individuals accordingly. So all, all this does is just pay their her a year later than what, yeah. what, what the plan was. We just need a motion to um, move this ahead to be paid for two. Very to delay exactly. the early retirement incentive to be in compliance with the union contract. I, mm -hmm. think that's uh, I make a motion to um, delay Mary Lyden's retirement incentive from 2018 to 2019, um, and January, June of 2019 and January of 2020, um, in compliance with the union. Union contract. Second. All right. All those I discussion. All those in favor. All right. Unanimous. Okay. Okay. Um, there's no school lunch report. Um, we've hired somebody as a school lunch person. Have we? Gail hired that individual right. and they're starting on August 14th. Do you have a name? I was not informed of who that person would be and I don't know that Jonathan would be here. Right. It says it on his paper. Oh, okay. I'm going to look at that, look at that. Staff, staff changes paper, so. Thank you for being a student. <laughs> <laughs> read it online, but mm -hmm. the individual will be working 22 hours a week. Yes. Where? Oh, right. I re remember reading that because I thought Healy Haley. Yes. Okay. So he's starting Monday, August 14th and will be working 22 hours a week. He will be doing the part of the food service job that Gail was doing along with some of what Pam Lawrence currently does. 
and also working with myself on some of the corrective action plans that came from the state and the food lunch program from uh, the finance standpoint. Okay, I lost the agenda. Um, okay, there is a, a sheet that has staff changes on it. It's on the right hand side. Almost halfway down. I thought of the way down. Is there any questions anyone has of, for John about those staff changes? Or replacements? Do we have yeah. a lot of unfilled spots? Or? No, we just have the, uh, the tech director right now, and we have candidates that have already interviewed, and we have the uh, integration technology specialist. Oh, well, Robert Hayes. All right. Thank you. And the, and the guidance counselor they're currently interviewing for here. Okay. Subcommittee reports we've already done. Thank you very much. Um, other business, our open house here at Pioneer. I think everybody can read that. Can I ask a question? Of course you can. No. Do we know how many people have taken out papers for just a point of interest for school committee? Has anybody talked to I Pam? I talked to Pam. There were three people that took them out for one position in Northfield. There is one open position in Warwick for Martha's seat, which is four years. There are... There's two in Burns. Guys, I can't hear when you're talking up there. Yeah. It's Meg. I can't hear when you guys are talking. Hey. Thank you. Um, in Burniston, I believe two there were two, there's two positions. And I heard there were two people that had taken out. I so believe. Three. Well, maybe that maybe that's right One because that was has before. One person to Pam. Yeah, that I know of. Okay, is there a deadline for that? That would be too late. I thought it was too late. I thought that that was like a week and a half ago. They had to. No, you had to get them. I thought you had to get them into the town clerk by then. No, I'm not sure. They had to get them over here. That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 By when? A couple weeks ago. I can't know the date, but yeah, they had a deadline to get them over here. The the July day. Yeah. July, July 12th or 15th. Uh, it might have been later than that, July 27th. Okay. I thought it was actually August, because I just got a call last week well, that my papers were ready. Well, is that, if, it, if whoever does that and misses it, there's always write-in. Not wonderful, no. but yes. Leiden has uh, two people, I believe, that are taking out papers. That are running for? Two, po two positions? Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like we're doing okay. Mm -hmm. How many are right. not three, three people for one position. Yes. In other business or concerns or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not done yet. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, so three people in Burnison for two positions or? Well, that'll have to be verified. At least two people are behaving. How many terms are up? Two. 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 Thank you. And Warwick, is it? Or is it Warwick, Warwick has Sue is running, and um, and the and Martha's position is open. So there's no one running for that. One for two. No. As far as we know. No, Sue is doing the two plus two years, and so there's one four-year position open. It will be good. Yeah, I got what you were saying, and I thought differently. Sorry about that. That's okay. All right. Okay, oh. so so this good and welfare thing. Oh, oh yeah, go ahead. When you guys have your little 15-minute session on August 16th, mm -hmm. if you could... And you can or don't have to, but I'd like to get the books closed by September 15th. Um, we just found out that we got money that was FY18 revenue from a Puerto Rico relief fund that basically helped pay for students that were displaced here. And that's to cover instructional costs. So I just need the school committee to vote um, to allow me to move salaries to that grant to be covered by that grant. 
those two items on the agenda for that yep. meeting? For if you can get the them. wording to no. Pam, that would be great. Well, like I said, I think it's more of a formality, but yes. it has to be used for a specific purpose. Right. So I'd like the school committee to make that vote so we're not just moving salaries around right. haphazardly. Um, and I don't know what school the student is from, so I think that How they were from. <laughs> um, I have a, I have to get a report. Pioneer, okay. just graduated. Yep, and I think it was I just think one student. Okay, I know. So I know there was him, and I'm not sure whether he had siblings in the elementary level or not. Okay. So I will get more detail. I think it was just him. Okay. Yeah. When I looked at the Excel spreadsheet, it looked like just one kid, but I'll get you the wording on that. And like I said, it's nice just a formality, but. Um, I found out that we got these funds and there are federal funds coming too, but those are general, like essentially general funds and we can use those to offset mm -hmm. other expenditures, but nobody knows what that amount is going to be. Sounds like I wish they'd spend more money for the infrastructure of Puerto Rico. <laughs> That's a it bad... Like we're reducing the deficit. Excuse me? I hate that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds like we might be reducing the deficit. Yeah, that um, there is also additional FY18 transportation money that was voted um, as part of the final governor's budget to go back and mm -hmm. give us more money too. So that will be additional, but we don't have any final figures or know when that will come in. Um, hoping it comes in in September so that we can accrue that when I'm closing the book. Great. Right. Good. I'll update right. you again. On, so there's, there's a lot of things like that that are out there um, yeah. that I'll update at the next year. So my question is, we need to have a forensic audit or an audit by our auditors when can we have that happen? Because that needs to happen. Um, we, I think I explained in our last school committee meeting too that the audit that's being performed is a front. That's the purpose of the okay. audit that is performed by Melanson and Heath every year. Right, I know that. But when, yeah. when are they going to be able oh, so to do that? Once I my... finish and close the book and prepare the end of year report, mm -hmm. I will notify them that okay. we are ready for the audit. Okay. Tanya Campbell already knows that I want that to happen in the fall. Exactly. So she's kind of earmarking some time okay. to be able to do that. Um, I will reach out to her shortly. Um, and find out what her schedule looks like. Um, the end of year report is due October 1st. Um, we will be able to get a one month extension on that because of extenuating circumstances. We also don't have a finalized voted budget, which is part of that end of year report. So I'll also be reaching out to Jay Sullivan to get that extension. But my intention is to have all of that done except for the finalized 19 budget by October 1st. Okay. So Great. a lot of things. I, I guess we're just then. anxious. Yeah. You so, don't think we should wait till April? And essentially what will happen, I foresee, in that no. FY18 audit, um, I, could tell I know in the FY17 one there's going to be notes about mm -hmm. things that we were working on in the management letter. Mm -hmm. um, since I came on and I perceived that in the FY18 management letter there will also be mm -hmm. notes about what we're not doing right, but there's also going to be notes from them <coughs> stating what we've done or what we're implementing to change mm -hmm. those so that we're not waiting two years for a positive management letter. Great, right. that's nice so to hear. So that's kind of um, where that came. But as soon as I know when that will be, I will let you guys know. But until <coughs> we're, we close yeah. our book, they need to come on schedule it because they have other districts and towns that are on a very strict schedule and they close their books the same day every year and they've got their stuff together. But, Great. Um, but they are going to work with us to get okay. that moved up. That was a huge concern of mine when I spoke with them when they came in April this year. Great. All right. That was just a question. I thought you meant like a past one. Like no, no, no. No, no, no. I just was wondering yeah. what, meeting, what our timeline. We have a couple of things. Second. Um, <laughs> good and welfare. That was brought up, and I think that's a fine thing, except that I don't know what it means. So well, my David thought is, that was David's thing, so my thought was, if this is supposed to be a feel-good thing, isn't it better to put it at the end? Where it's whatever you want to bring up. Good, bad, and different. Could be about sports, could be about the school. Well, could be about anything. Okay, well, what I thought it wrong right now. Let's adjourn this meeting. I have something else to talk about, so don't run out here yet. We have so, yeah. so the good and welfare, I just said if we put it at the end and then we could talk about if we had something good to talk about, yeah. maybe I'm, I don't know. I just talked um, about it. So our next meetings, but what I have to talk about is I talked to John 
and I have something to pass out to committee members and then also I'd like it to go out to staff. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. So my thought is um, it would be fun just to get in together to a casual potluck picnic at our house, not our house, our, our summer retreat or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, so here's the stuff. I only I made one mistake, I think. Um, from south, I wrote Route 61. I should have. I'm 63. I should have put 63 and two intersection if you're coming from the south. But I hope there people. Is there is. It's, that, would, that would be, be nice. Okay. All right. 101. <laughs> well, actually. It might not show up on. The it might yeah, not it show, show up. up no, but there. at least it's something to um, you know. talk about. Yeah. She I'll email. Really you to find no, I'll <laughs> email. It. No, seriously, we have this wonderful barn that's next to the river that doesn't have an address. Yeah, but um, what so town is it? <laughs> it's Northfield. Oh, okay. Until you, until you, um, until you, you I don't know. Going until you can't go any further. I would say I'll email <laughs> you the the farmhouse that we have as rental property. That's the number that you probably could find, and I think that's three eighty three. Pine Meadow Road. Does that sound right, Martha? Yes. It's the same place. Okay. Yeah. I may be in Pennsylvania that week. You live there, well. huh? <laughs> well, she, she's been there a couple times, and so is Kathy. So, 383 Pine Meadow Road. Don't know your address. And I did make a couple goes. So, um, so, spread the word to all employees of the district and our administration, and I'll see if Pam can. Um, can scan this. Send, yeah, two extra. So, Pat, I'll go if I don't have to wear an ID badge. No <laughs> ID badge. This, uh, this could the just last be time. sent out as an attachment. Exactly. She can send it to the district. Oh. That's what I thought. She could send it to the district. So, would you like yeah, to take this for her sure. to an ID badge. go ahead? Thank you. The graduation. Um, yeah, you but were I, one of them. I would, I would open it up to more than just staff and committee members, but I think at this point, we just need to, um, we just need to get together and have some fun because we've had enough unfun for a long time. So, what are those? Yes. Yeah. Watermelon with John. I like it. All right. Now, <laughs> now, if anybody wants to make a motion to adjourn, they can. So moved. Well, it's already done. Okay. Already done. All right. We're All those in it. favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. We're out of here. Aye.